On PM Express tonight, a very interesting conversation about the untouchable CEOs of state. Wondering what that is? Well, don't worry. We'll try and break it down all down for you, unpacking that Supreme Court verdict. A very fundamental, groundbreaking, landmark judgment of the Supreme Court with uh, such wide-ranging implications for the management of the state. How did this all come about? If you remember, in 2017, many executive heads or CEOs of several uh, state institutions were asked to pack out by, by this current government. Now, that set in motion a chain of events. You remember at Cocoa Board, for example, uh, and the Cocoa Marketing Company, 14 top management staff were, were asked to proceed on terminal leave for a few days, for a uh, few days after we, we know that the President Akufuado was elected. That became a very controversial subject. And you'll probably remember this particular name, Stephen Opuni, who is actually in court uh, with this current government as well. Now, the then Cocoa Board CEO, uh, who was appointed by John Dramani Mahama, had his appointment terminated. Uh, the CEO of the Free Zones Board, the Ghana Gas Company, the NYA, the STC were all affected. All of them were asked to proceed on leave. In fact, in the case of Stephen Opuni, there's a very famous letter written and signed by the President's Executive Secretary, uh, Nana Asante Bedieto, who asked him to pack out and leave his office by 5 p.m. on a certain particular day. Now, some of the CEOs decided to take this on. They challenged this matter. A lot of them went to the public domain and put their cases before the, the court of public opinion. But then it finally ended up at the Supreme Court. This was in 2017. The NDC was very upset that some of the appointees had gone. And, and so this ended up at the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has a decision. The plaintiff in this matter, though, uh, those who took the matter to the court, they argued that the removal of the CEOs and the governing boards were unconstitutional. The Supreme Court, in a unanimous decision, this was delivered just last week, uh, agreed that sacking the CEOs was simply unconstitutional. That's not all they said on this matter, though. They disagreed that the removal of the governing board was also unconstitutional. So this created a whole mix of issues that we are now having to digest. It also ruled that the portions of the Presidential Transition Act, and this is the act that governs transitions. Each time there is a change in government and we are moving from one party government to the other, this particular act governs it. But it says portions of that, of that particular act, particularly the portion that says that automatically um, if you are a CEO of an executive uh, head of a state institution, you automatically lose your job. You automatically have to leave with the government that appointed you. The uh, Supreme Court says that particular part of, the of, of that particular act was unconstitutional um, uh, for the removal of CEO, was unconstitutional. The ruling held that the CEOs of the state institutions cannot be dismissed just because we change government. You, you cannot touch them just because you change government. What you can do is you can let the members of the governing board go, but there's a lot there to interrogate. Does this ruling create confusion, possibly, for governance? Just imagine a scenario. If a new government wins the 2020 elections, and then they will have to deal with chief executives appointed by you know, this government who will stay there perpetually. And this could be any government, really. That is, I guess, an argument put forward by this current attorney general. But the Supreme Court doesn't seem to agree. We'll look at that and interrogate it with. The NDC has a statement out today on this matter. Very interesting statement they put out. We'll look at that as well and ask and unpack uh, the verdict for you here on PMX. So stay with us. And you're live on PM Express tonight, uh, and a very fascinating conversation uh, emanating directly from the Supreme Court, a ruling that will have fundamental consequences for the way we're governing this great state of ours. It has to do with the appointments of chief executives, executive heads, and governing uh, councils and boards of state institutions across the length and breadth of this country. It's been one of the most controversial issues in our time, and the Supreme Court seemed to have settled this particular debate. 
and the political parties already having a conversation about there's a lawyers as well are chewing on on the supreme court's verdict which is very fascinating they are in many parts really but they but they are standing one though to point to is the ruling that says that the uh, practice where we simply sack all ceos of state institutions is in, is unconstitutional that cannot happen anymore however the the president's appointees on the governing boards will go with him. In fact, a third, a third, a third uh, effect of the ruling is that it's also not automatic that the governing councils and boards of state institutions also become automatically dissolved. They stay. Uh, and the cases where the president have appointees there, those appointees will go with the president, but not the chief executive. That is a very interesting ruling that we are going to dissect tonight on the show. With me to discuss this in the studio, is private legal practitioner uh, Yao Pon, who agreed to join us uh, on the day when the Black Stars are still playing and uh, leading by two goals to one. You can see him in his outfit. Yao, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, I know you're, you're following <laughs> this. We'll be updating you yeah. as the scores come through on PM Express. Also joining us live uh, is uh, John Singh Asir in Kitia, who is the General Secretary of the uh, National Democratic Congress. And you can see him there. He's joining us live from the headquarters of the party. They have a statement out tonight that I'll share with you. Mr. Sudan I'm grateful that you could join us uh, from your office uh, as well. We'll also be joined by one of the uh, chief executives who were affected by this. We'll speak to him, Ras Mubarak. He's a former CEO of the National Youth Authority. Uh, will also join us via phone. And then the counsel, the lawyer in the matter before the Supreme Court, will also give us a, a thought on, on what this means. Uh, for the governing for the governing of this particular country, but I will start with uh, Johnson Asir in Kitia, and I will read to you portions of a statement the NDC issued today on the back of this. And Mr. Asir in Kitia is with me on the line, so um, he, he can also listen in and answer a few questions on this. In the National Democratic Congress, and this is signed by Mr. Asir in Kitia, uh, welcomed the decision in recent case of the Supreme Court, which of course declares that by unanimously, really declared that there is null and void a provision that the government of the president, Akufuado, removed from office all chief executive officers and director generals of the public corporations appointed by previous administrations. In so doing, the court has clarified the constitutional provision vis-a-vis -vis the provisions of the Presidential Transition Act. And this is where it's interesting. The NDC is therefore, by this statement, advising all such categories of chief executive officers and director generals who were so affected to take appropriate steps to vindicate their rights in appropriate fora. Uh, Mr. Sedin can you please explain the last paragraph? What exactly are you expecting uh, these former chief executives who you say you know, were affected? What are you expecting of them specifically on the back of this verdict? Well, thank you very much, and uh, good evening to listeners. Uh, to begin with, let me thank lawyer Edwige Tamaklo and uh, lawyer Theophilus Donko for contributing to the development of the law in Ghana. Going specifically to the question you asked, I believe, or we in NDC believe, that uh, the effect of the Supreme Court was to interpret an existing provision of the Constitution. So we are not looking at the ruling as uh, the making of a new law. Mm. It is actually the interpretation of an existing law. Mm. So um, what we are implying by advising the CEOs affected to seek means of vindicating their rights is simply to say that um, the decision to remove them, having been declared null and void, means that they have never been removed. And so if anybody has been appointed in their place, that appointment becomes null and void. And so uh, we believe that it falls within the rights of these chief executives to take steps to ensure that they are either reinstated or they are compensated for the wrongful dismissal. Mm. 
It's interesting you use the word wrongful dismissal, uh, but you acknowledge, though, that in 2017, when this current government, and you mentioned Anado's name specifically, the president, took over, the Presidential Transition Act was in force. And that act was clear that in case of the new government coming in, all these categories, you, see, you, you go with the previous government. And they were simply following that transitional act, which was passed uh, by your own government. Yes. I think what the plaintiffs sought at the Supreme Court is an interpretation uh, and that will declare the presidential obsessions of the Presidential Transition Act, which allows the president to terminate such appointment, to be unconstitutional. Mm. And once the Supreme Court agrees with them that those sessions are unconstitutional, it means that those terminations had no basis. The Supreme Court is a superior law to the Act of Parliament. To the Act of Parliament. You make a very interesting point about the fact that these, uh, those who are affected can uh, have a, a, a redress in court to have their positions either reinstated or compensated. But I've heard lawyers argue today that a, a, a ruling of the Supreme Court amounts to, you know, and, and, and boils down to that phrase that the lawyers use, cannot have retrospective application. So it cannot apply to those who have already fallen by, by the law. What's, what's your own reaction to that? I thought I began by explaining that point. Yes, but it insists that Court that argument cannot hold in this case. Was to interpret and ex it can, it can hold, because they are interpreting an existing law. It is not as if it is now that the Constitution is being drawn. Mm. The Constitution existed as at the time these wrongful terminations were being made. And I want to believe, I hold the view that those who uh, did the appoint, uh, uh, dismissals and uh, subsequent appointments interpreted the Constitution wrongly. So all that the Supreme Court has done is to correct the interpretation that has been put on the uh, various articles by uh, the, the makers of the Pres uh, Presidential Transition Act and also the presidents who proceeded to terminate the appointments. So it must not be seen as if the, in, the date of the interpretation is the date of the making of the law. The law existed. And so what the Supreme Court has done is just to interpret uh, the law, what the law means. And uh, the law has existed since 1992. Yeah, uh, Mr. Senator what do you say to those who say this Supreme Court ruling can create a state of confusion and, and absurdity? So. Assuming NDC wins power in 2021, January, you will find yourself with chief executives of state institutions appointed by, and these are very serious, fundamental, uh, very important state institutions like the Petroleum Authority, like the, like the, uh, including the, the GMPs, etc. You find yourself with chief executives appointed by this current government who you cannot touch and you must work with, but ideologically, orientation-wise, and in terms of vision, does not necessarily believe in your own stated vision for running a country. Is, is this something that the NDC is, is comfortable with? Um, but I believe you are combining two issues. Mm -hmm. The first issue is that you are trying to find out what we will be doing if these chief executives who have been wrongly appointed remain in office. Okay. If they are still in office, then we will take um, steps to ensure that those wrongful appointments are terminated. And those who were re uh, um, removed will then have to be um, um, reinstated as many of them as are still young enough 
to be re-engaged would have to be reinstated. But, but if we put that one aside and come to the bigger question of whether you inherit a public service with appointees having, by, uh, having been made by previous governments. See, the Constitution envisages a public service that is politically neutral. I believe that it is the action of some politicians that have tended to politicize the public service. Um, and this began within this uh, Fourth Republic. This began during the era of President Kufuor, because that was the first transition. And there were many people were asked to proceed on leave, were removed from office against all advice and complaints. At that time, I remember the removals even affected chief directors of ministries. And I was in parliament at that time when these issues were raised, that the government was trying to politicize the public service. We never had any hearing from President Kufuor's administration. The argument at that time was that if you went to uh, US, any government that comes to power comes with a new set of uh, um, uh, bureaucratic heads of ministries. And we said that it doesn't happen like that in UK. And substantially, our democracy has been built along the lines of the uh, United Kingdom. And so in United Kingdom, the public service is considered to be neutral. And that is, and this tradition is shared by several other countries in Europe. That is how come there can be confusion as to who wins an election and so on. And while the, con the confusion is being sorted out, the state will continue to be run by the bureaucracy. And so when you take the 1992 constitution, that is how come you have provisions that protect the public servants from uh, this type of uh, uh, political removals and, 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 and so on. So it was an attempt by politicians markedly from President Kufuor's era to try to politicize the public service. Otherwise, um, if the Supreme Court, by the Supreme Court's ruling, we are to go back to ensure that we perceive the public service as politically neutral, it shall be. And any and every government would have to work with the public service that uh, they inherit. The laws, the laws do not um, protect public servants who abuse their offices for political interests. So whilst they are working, they are not immune to assessment. If they are assessed, and some are found to have been playing politics with their appointments, then uh, you know, there, there, are, there is room to uh, deal with them. But you cannot sack people on a wholesale basis on, on, on the argument that uh, some government has, uh, has come to power, another government has gone, so therefore whoever appointed the uh, previous appointees because it's gone, it means all those appointees must go with him. I believe that it is wrong, and that is not what the 1992 Constitution envisaged for our public service. Uh, Mr. Sedinkert, uh, some say that when you said we, the, the, the public service has been politicized, the NDC is guilty of that too, that in 2009, when you, when you came to power, steps were taken as well, similar to what you say John Kufour did and what you accuse a Kufour of doing and so removed people in public office who are appointed by the previous government. You accept that? Sure, I'll concede. But you know, reaction follows action. I'm telling you where 
the process began. So on the assumption of office of President Kufu, if the appointees in the public service had not been touched, then nobody will have any cause <laughs> to remove anybody when we came to power. But if um, you know the appointees or public servants were inherited at, at, uh, from the previous administrations at the assumption of the 1992 constitution. So if we had allowed them to remain untouched, then there will not be any cause for anybody to come in to touch them. But you don't expect that you assume power and, and, and uh, you begin to remove everybody and put other set of persons there. Then when another party comes, they will then protect what you have put there. So it begins from where the first removals were made. Also, please clarify for me. You said something. So that, mm -hmm. that was... <clears throat> yes, please go on. Well, go ahead. Yeah, you, you said something. Well, I'm saying that now that the Supreme Court has come to clarify the issues, I think that we can all, uh, once we reinstate those who are entitled to be reinstated, then we have demonstrated that public servants cannot be touched. So, so the NDC wants this So government. whoever comes to power mm -hmm. in, in, in future... Clarify for me. So the NBC wants to which I will, will leave the, the, the civil the public service again. Untouched. So the NBC, just clarify for me. The NBC wants this current government untouched to reinstate. Just clarify for me, Mr. Asin Kitia. So the NBC wants this current government to reinstate that those is appointees. What the ruling, that is the implication of the ruling. Because the ruling says that the basis upon which they were removed. It's wrong. So if they remain in power, then it means that any subsequent government in seeking to implement this uh, ruling can proceed to remove them. And the NDC government... If but if they are removed now mm -hmm. and the appropriate persons reinstated, then it means that there will be no cause for anybody to remove anybody in future. And, and that is the clarity I was going to ask, that from what you said, the next NDC government, if you win the next elections, will take steps legally to remove yeah. the current uh, uh, CEOs who you believe are appointed illegally. We don't think that they will have to wait for the assumption of office of the next NDC government. That's why we are calling them to take the appropriate steps to vindicate their rights. If the wrongful dismissals are reversed, then we have proven that uh, those CEOs cannot be uh, touched by any subsequent government. Mm. But once their removal have been declared unconstitutional, if the government continues to protect them to act in these uh, unconstitutional offices, then when we come to power, it, it, will, it will be our responsibility to correct that unconstitutionality. Uh, Mr. Zanigetia, I am really grateful uh, that you joined us. Can you say a word for me on the Black Stars? You are playing right now. They are uh, drawing 2-2 two -two with, uh, with, with Benin. Well, I wish the Black Stars well. I'm not a football fan, <laughs> but any time the Black Stars are playing, I consider it to be a war between Ghana and other countries. Mm. And as a good citizen, I always want my side to win. Uh, thank you very much that you, you agreed to join us uh, via live link from your office. Very interesting conversation, uh, Yaupon, yes. from the NDC. Let's start from, there's some, several legal points he's made. Let's start from the fundamental argument he's making, that this is not as if a new law has been passed. Where you introduce the clause, they don't take retrospective effect. He says, this is an existing law that has been interpreted, and so those who feel affected can actually go under the act and undo what was done to them in the past. What's, what's your reading of that?
Yes, that's, that's a very interesting legal yes, argument. I'm, I'm really fascinated. Coming from a non-lawyer. I'm really fascinated by uh, the, um, his expression of the law as he understands it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to take it to be the position of NDC. I want to take it to be the position of member of the That public. is the general secretary oh, well, of the NDC. But the, he must have his views. And I, I, I'm saying that I really respect his view. Mm. Um, and for me, it is important that we all stretch the law to its uh, limits, as he has done. Break even it down though, for me. Even though, um, to some extent, it, get, it got to a time that I wish he had um, stayed the, the very direction that he started. Mm -hmm. But he may have been... Um, a bit influenced, and it's fine by, by some political considerations. Uh, and the, the, the first point is that... Um, is he, he right, is, though? Uh, it, it depends. No, he makes the point that um, the Supreme Court did not make a law yes. in, in this case. The Supreme Court only... Maybe he used the word interpreted. Some would say the Supreme Court only restated the law as it should have been mm -hmm. understood mm -hmm. and not what we had made it to be in terms of the practice. Mm -hmm. So in other words, he's saying that the, the practice that we adopted from the passage of this law in particular um, was itself an aberration. It, it was inconsistent with the Constitution. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if we had followed the Constitution and if we had passed the law to be consistent with the Constitution, this practice would have, wouldn't have even come into effect. Yep. So he is saying that we had only by this decision, the Supreme Court had only restated the position of the law as it existed mm -hmm. before the passage of this Presidential Transition Act. It, that's quite jurisprudential. I mean, it's, 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 it's interesting to come out with such position, except that, I mean, we have accepted in Article 107, it's quite clear that no law can be made to apply retrospectively, to impose a liability, or limit the rights of persons, accrued rights, so to speak. So a law can be made to be retrospective. If it is to enhance your rights, or as it were, create new rights for you. So today, if the government makes a law, that, or a policy, that um, the um, salaries of all public servants have been increased, but it's to take effect from January, 7th January this year. That is retrospective, but it's, it's a good law. Mm -hmm. That is not what the Constitution is against. Mm -hmm. But if the same government were to make a law that we have increased income taxes, and so this, I, I, all public servants or all Ghanaians who um, receive income from, let's say, earnings, uh, to pay 10%. And it's to take effect from January this year. That will be retrospect, the kind of retrospective application of law with the Constitution abhors, mm. the Constitution is against. In the same vein, when the Supreme Court gives decisions such as this, it is inherently understood to mean that it is not to be applied retrospectively to the extent that it will affect accrued rights or decisions or actions that have been taken. So let me give you an example. This is not the first time. I'll give you what I consider to be one of the latest. Um, sometime, I think two years ago, uh, Professor Sari sued the General Legal Council and for a declaration that they had engaged in some um, unconstitutional act by requiring students to write exams and also interviews. Um, the Supreme Court came to the decision that certain acts and some of the reliefs were in fact grounded. But they said that if they were to apply the decision retrospectively, then students who had written their exams some three years, four years, or two years earlier would have their results annulled. And some of them would, who had already become lawyers would have then ceased to be lawyers. And to create so, an absurdity. Yes, in a situation like this, the decision is applied prospectively. Mm -hmm. You understand? The same as the Abu Ramadan case, mm -hmm. where the Supreme Court declared that some persons who had used their national insurance card um, to register, um, the, the, that act of registration was unconstitutional. And yet said that the decision will not be applied retrospectively because then it will lead to the annulment of results of presidential and parliamentary elections. Chaos. And may 
could have even affected the some persons of the elections, yeah. who had yes out outcome of those elections. So usually, when the Con the Supreme Court, which is um, the only institution that is mandated to interpret the Constitution, makes interprets the Constitution, the es expectation mm -hmm. or the understanding is that it is usually applied prospectively okay, and not, not retrospectively. But otherwise, there is a, the, the, as I said, there's an inherent um, admission also that the Supreme Court didn't mention uh, create a new law. But I'll give you another one. It's about um, when lawyers are supposed to renew their licenses. Mm -hmm. You know, the lawyer who had not renewed his licenses and commenced some suit. Later on, when the case went to the Supreme Court, the court said that, yes, the, all the processes that had been filed, to the extent that they did not comply with the relevant provisions of the um, the, uh, the, bar, the, um, the legal profession act, those acts will be rendered void. But then they then gave the respite. Subsequently, when another person then brought a similar application that 10 years ago, somebody had a judgment against my client. And at the time, the lawyer didn't have his license renewed. But the court said, well, we understand that. But then our decision mm. in the case you are relying on is prospective. Mm. So all lawyers who may have um, practiced law or uh, performed some legal services mm. Mm. before the decision in the Cowboy case or the Terriwaja case, the acts that they engage in are, are uh, um, preserved. But our decisions in matters like this are usually prospective. So, so, so the point you're making is that the demand of the NDC is not something that can automatically be enforced on the back of the judgment. It still has to go to court for If, if indeed any of the affected people take the NDC's advice, they will still have to go to court to get a specific order for that. Well, I take it to be um, competing perspectives. Okay. So on one hand, you can argue that since the Supreme Court only declared or affirmed, made a declaration of what had actually been the law at all time, mm -hmm. then it did not have a retrospective effect. He only declared that um, this was the law. Yeah, then, and the law existed. Then some others will also say that you know, if we were to be applied retrospectively, then it is also going to affect accrued rights and impose liabilities and so, so on. So it's so, so a very, very so, interesting point you, you, mm. you've made, and then this is called as well. And so you see, what, you see a situation where if somebody really believes and agrees with the NDC, the only thing to do is to go to court again. Well, let us be fair. I've read the, the, the judgment, and I, I've seen a, I have a copy, a yeah. certified copy. The case did not make reference to remove persons who were removed. In fact, reading the date the rate was filed, it was on 4th January 2017, even before President Kufuado was sworn in office on 7th January 2017. Mm. Is that not so? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the person only anticipated that that will happen. That this has happened before in the past mm -hmm. and is likely to happen. Mm. So it, it, the case did not really commence because the, the, this current government had removed certain persons. Mm. Because in fact, it was still during the transition mm -hmm. and President Mahama was still in power. But I think in anticipation of what has always been the practice, that is why the person commends the action. So the case was really not about whether or not the removal of some chief executive by President Kufuado and his government was constitutional or was unconstitutional. It wasn't about that. Mm. It, was a, a, it was just seeking a declaration in anticipation of what... But it has that effect, does it not? It has the effect of making the dismissals, which happened post the filing, unconstitutional. No, it doesn't. But that's why I'm saying that that will be applying it retrospectively. retrospectively. You but, but, but as you also have, have, have said, even that argument is not, it's not something that you could take for granted. Well, you that's still what have I'm to saying. That is, for What's me, up? I usually don't like to express my view about <laughs> people's view to okay. say that they are wrong. They are wrong. Okay. So all I, I choose, choose, so, so I choose, all I wanna, I choose all I the phrase that it is just a competing yeah. perspective. All I want to establish is that mm -hmm. if any affected person mm -hmm. wants to make the argument that I was unfairly dismissed and so reinstate me, what is the right way to approach it? Go back to the Supreme Court? 
Oh, well, no, I, I, it's a matter that even the High Court can hear. Can hear, okay, but, good. But, I mean, as to whether the person can properly ground his case on a law mm -hmm. that will lead to a declaration in his favor, it's another matter. Yeah. In actual okay. fact, I, I favor the view that it's, 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 it's prospective. Okay. Let, let, let. And, and just before, just, if yeah, you sure. trust me, you see, this is not even the first time a decision like this has been given. Mm -hmm. um, you remember in 2009, uh, uh, the, our most senior um, Okujeto, mm -hmm. uh, senior counsel um, Sam Okujeto, was also in court. You know, the 2009, nine, when President Mahama took office, similar things happened. Um, senior Okujeto was a member of the um, Bank of Ghana um, board of directors, or governing board, so to speak. And he was removed. He took the matter to court in 2009, 2010, and on 8th February 2013, the High Court presided over by a justice of the Court of Appeal who had additional responsibility mm -hmm. in the High Court, stated that the removal of the directors, in this case, um, Sneokuja To, was wrongful, and that the president had no right to remove mm -hmm. such board of directors when their term of office had not ended or determined or expired. So this is not even the first time. No, that you raise a very important point. Doesn't this latest ruling contradict this one? Because this latest ruling says the governing boards mm -hmm. must go where they appoint an authority when there's a change in government. Is that what it says? Well, I mean, in all fairness, this is the Supreme Court decision. Yes. But I'm, I'm only saying that before this decision... No, I'm just was, asking... Oh, no, that, that's fine. That, that is, but, that is, but, uh, but even that, even that, it can still be said... But that's why they gave the rider yeah. or the caveat that in all these cases, there must be a just cause. True. On the basis of which these persons can be removed, but it didn't. That didn't apply in the case of the government. It council. didn't apply. But I'm saying that strictly speaking, when you want to run it over, it's yeah. also possible that the matter really that was before the court is what the issues were raised about, and they were mainly, uh, mainly substantially about the pub those who were appointed by the Public Services Commission yeah. or by the president through the Public Services Commission. Yeah. The other issue of uh, corporate governance, which the um, Senior Kujato's case also determined. For me, it's still very relevant. Which is what? Which is that when the uh, persons have been appointed to the board, all right, and the board has affirmed the appointment or nominating the board has affirmed the appointment and giving them specific time, unless the usual grounds on which uh, on the basis of which the Companies Act has spelled for the removal of a member of a board has occurred, or a person has engaged you in... You can't touch them. You can't touch them. Let, let, so let. I think it is also an outstanding matter. Is, that's the Supreme Court, right? This no, is no, Supreme this is the High Court. Okay, so of course, the Supreme Court's verdict now, it's... it's that, that, you see, overshadowed you see that's one. what I'm saying. Because there's a contradiction there, and once it's a contradiction, the Supreme Court holds sway. The, con the Supreme Court decision now says, if you are Okujeto, for example, case then has been thrown out. No, let me, let me explain by this. By this No, let me explain this. It's very interesting because this case, uh, Kujetu's case was February 8th, 2013. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in uh, 2012, I think May thereabout, yes, May, the Presidential Transition Act was passed while this case was pending. And so by the time this case was given, the Presidential Transition Act had already been passed. Mm -hmm. And so it actually rendered the decision, as the lawyers may put it, arguably nugatory, which means that the uh, parliament may, I don't know whether they anticipated a decision like this. So then that uh, act now says that all members of board or governing board and so on will go with the government. It was after that on, the, on 8 February that this decision was also given, mm. uh, in which the high court said that the removal of Okujeto and persons such as those who occupy sad board decision was wrongful and unconstitutional. There are jurisprudential issues about these things. When we won't bore people about let's, this. Really. Let's deal with, I guess, the big questions of mm. what this means for the governance of this great state of ours, right? And that's the question I was asking mm. uh, as I earlier. And that was the, if you look at the arguments that put forth by the, by the Attorney General, that's one of the arguments that this could create confusion. 
the way they've ruled. So you're going to have a situation in 2021, January, possibly, and based on this latest ruling. And explain this to me how this works. Where a lot of these state institutions, and these institutions are very, are very consequential to the mm. way as the state is run, will have CEOs appointed by this government. And I'm, 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 I'm making this question on assumption mm. that NDC wins, right? Yeah, right. NDC comes or any to other party. Or any other party, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, we'll have CEOs who will be in power, in office, appointed by Nanado, and yet a John Mahama, for example, will be the president. With a governing board, which hasn't been dissolved as it used to be, stay, stays in office, just that the president's appointees go. I mean, don't you see it? A situation of confusion yeah, and know, the running of the state could pose challenges to the what, proper what, gathering what, what, of this country. Let, let me even add to it. On the day that a person who wins the presidential election does not have friends who have major who are majority from his own party in parliament. Yeah. So on the day that MPP, the presidential the person who wins the presidential election was sponsored by MPP. Yeah. And then Members of parliament, ah, NDC, ah, ah, and the NDC any majority, other, any other particular party. Mm. That day, if that is the day that, in my view, I will really go to church and, <laughs> and thank sing God hallelujah. That <laughs> above all that He has done for us, this is the best. And I'm also looking forward to the day that this one will be implemented. It's the same thing as the election of the DC is that we, That's we, we, we've been which, campaigning true, about. True. So for me, it is that which will really ensure absolute accountability and ultimate accountability from our politicians. Mm. Because the assurance that whatever I send to parliament will be passed mm. because of the ship system and because of other advantages and benefits, it's not really giving us the best, with all due respect. And so for me, it is, this is a, a very fundamental decision. It's not as if we didn't know. In fact, the Presidential Transition Act itself and those that unconstitutional practice. It is a practice that was endorsed by the passage of Parliamentary Act, which was actually unconstitutional at the time it was passed. Mm. So we are looking forward to a situation such as this. And in addition, if I'm not being repetitive, get a parliament that the majority it's not, will, will like, not let me have an executive in, in government. At all. Yo, hold so, hold, hold yes. on, I want to bring in the uh, former CEO of the, of the National Youth Authority. Uh, who has an interesting situation, but he's also a member of parliament, Mr. Rasmus Barak. Mr. Barak, thank you for time. You're on PMS, right? Thank you very much indeed. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, to uh, viewers, and I must say, what, what a, day, a day to be discussing this issue. But what a day, uh, yes. I, I, well, as you may be aware, I mean, the uh, march is ongoing, and <laughs> we are all silent and sad by the state of affairs, you know. Of the Black like, Stars. Of the Black Stars, well, absolutely. Well, the black stars they never disappoint, as as you know what I mean, you know. So, so, so yeah. I mean, you know, here at PMS, we we knew this might happen, and so we want to see if we can get people's minds on this. But let's quickly go into the. You you would have suffered the fate of getting a letter from the presidency Jubilee House saying, "Please leave office by 5 p.m." Had it not been the fact that you had won your seat as a member of parliament, so you sort of resigned before that verdict, that inevitability befell you. That was your situation, correct? Even I was the um, chief executive officer of the National Youth Authority yeah. and uh, by virtue a board member of the Youth Employment Agency as well. Yeah. So uh, on both calls, I would have been asked to, um, I would have been sacked actually. I have been sacked, yes. Um, yes. You know, immediately after the MPP, you know, took office. But I wasn't waiting for the MPP to take office before I attended in my resignation. But I think in discussing this, we need to um, have a historical perspective to this. Mm. Um, the culture of, you know, uh, new government sacking people, you know, dates back to 66 when the administration of Kwame Nkrumah was overthrown. Now, fast forward 1992 to 2001, even when the NDC lost power, um, for those who had... Uh, a memory longer than 2009 and 2012 would recall what happened in, 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 in this country. A lot of CEOs were arbitrarily uh, uh, removed without just cause. And um, there are provisions under which a CEO can be removed. There are provisions under which, you know, per the 
code of conduct of the Pub, uh, Public Services Commission for all CEOs and, and, and the rest of it. There are clear guidelines. Mm. The, uh, uh, if you look at, uh, I think, Section 5 of the Code of Conduct of the uh, Public Service Commission, it says that, you know, you must be neutral politically and that you must not allow um, um, your politics to cloud the execution of your work. Mm. Now, more often, we see chief executive officers, members of board, clad in party at a attending party meeting. Clearly, by that, by that very act, you know, they contra contradict the, uh, what you call it, the uh, provisions of the Public Services Code of Conduct. So that alone f can form the basis of, a, you know, government saying that person A or person B should go. go. And I think from the year 2001, into 2009 and um, 2016, and even currently, a lot of people would have found themselves in a situation where, even though in law, they are public servants, but they have, you know, by one way or the other, through their own actions. And, 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 you make a, and you make an interesting point, and then even to make it worse, Parliament then passes an act that legitimizes that action in the Transition exactly. Act that says that once a new government comes, everybody go. But if you look at the shadow of the Transition Act, it is categorical in terms of uh, the, the, the persons who have to go, yes. ministers and their deputies, yes. chief executive officers of uh, metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies, and the rest of it, ambassadors who are not, or high commissioners who are not career diplomats. Yeah. In the Transitional Act, it's very, very clear. Yeah, but it also includes what we are talking about, people, the chief executives and members of boards, Etc. Also, you know, you know, you know, boards have a tenure. So ordinarily, um, in, in in building stronger institutions and a great country, we should be allowing the tenure of boards to elapse. That is my, you know. Well, and, uh, and, and by uh, the way, the Supreme Court agreed with that in this latest ruling. The boards will stay in place. However, those members on the boards appointed by the previous government will go with the, the president if he loses power. But the board is in place. They're no longer dissolved automatically. Exactly. But, but, but that is not a new thing, even. Uh, take the use, use, use employment um, uh, agency board, for instance. There are members on that board, and including several government agencies, who are appointed onto these boards by virtue of the nature of their work. So, for instance, the chief executive officer of the National Authority automatically sits on the board of the yeah. uh, youth, youth employment agency. Then you have somebody, a, a civil servant appointed from the Ministry of Labor. And I can give you a typical example. There's a gentleman called uh, Kolete, an expert in labor issues. He, he served that. under the President Mahama administration as a board, board member of the youth employment agency. He's currently mm. serving as a board member. The ministry has nominated him again. Yeah. So we have these instances where, you know, persons, because they are in the strict terms of civil servants would continue to serve to stay. on 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 other Ross, j just in, in just for the sake of time let me ask you this quick question about the position of the ndc i'm sure you've seen this the party statement that says that all the chief executives who were affected who were removed by this current government should take steps to get themselves reinstated just before you came on we just finished talking to john cecil and Ketia, who says that this government should reinstate all those uh, they fired or the party would, would do that for, for, for them if they win power next year, in 2021. Um, what's your, do you agree with that position? And if no, you're affected, will you, will you pursue a line of action to get reinstated? Even exactly. We, we, we have seen some level of arbitrariness as far as the uh, conduct of affairs by this government is concerned. Then the governor of the Bank of Ghana, for instance, he has guaranteed tenure of office. No, but he resigned. Well, he, he was pushed, he resigned, <laughs> he was sacked. It is still an issue that is, you know, very, very debatable. Oh, uh, yeah, you I know. know. And I'm of the view that he was indeed uh, uh, nudged out or pushed out. But I'm saying you have instances where holders of certain positions have guaranteed tenure of office, yet this administration has had or found ways of getting them out of where they are. And for me, they have set a precedent. 
If you look at the circumstances under which Charlotte was saying, for instance, as electoral commission. I mean, that, I mean that, that, that's, that's a whole different kettle of fish. If we what, go there, we're going to... What I was going to say to that is that uh -huh. there's currently um, um, heads of public institutions, including the current you know, uh, electoral commissioner, who has done, if not worse things, as Charlotte Osei was accused of. Mm. But it hasn't right. been proven yet. It's now uh, just a suspicion on the part of NDC who disagree with her anyway. We, I mean, we, but, 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 but my fundamental party, point, even. my fundamental point, just before we wrap mm. up, you, you, I just want to find out from you, um, if you've been affected, you would have taken steps to be reinstated? Clearly, I, by the virtue of the fact that, you know, I was very political, did not see myself even holding on if the president had even asked me to hold on, or if I hadn't, you know, contested uh, 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 um, as a member of parliament. Mm. For me, once you violate, you know, the, the, the public service commission code of conduct. As you became, it became political, party politics. And, 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 become, and, and become political. I think it's just fair, fair that you would recuse yourself um, in the event that, you know, a new administration has taken over. As you but did. And I want to say a big thank you, Ras. I'm grateful, but I just ran out of time on this. I'm grateful that you joined us with your thoughts. We'll take a quick break. We'll return, we'll wrap up. We'll get his view on, on where does this leave us. Stay with us. Well, I mean, to a point that um, it also affirms what we've been saying all the time that let us continue to trust in our judiciary because this one people may think especially looking at the position of the attorney general um, people may think that oh well i mean who are we to um, fight against the government and all sorts of conspiracy theories but this is one of the examples where a case that a government may would have wished that it goes other way may go the opposite way because we have inde independent-minded judges and judiciary that don't look at political lineages of parties or even their own political inclination, the law, their conscience, and their belief in God. So I think we should continue to believe in that. And let us continue to test the law. Mm. Let us not... Um, sometimes then we take on the person who took the case and instead of looking at what he took there, the substance of the thing. because he is this. Final, is final question on this. Does this leave Ghana in a better place? Far, far, far. far better we should place. have been here long, long ago. Before this okay. time. And we, we pray okay. to God that... Uh, we, we really, the test of this, of this will case. be, will come when there's a change in government. And then we'll see yeah. what the NDC, if the NDC wins, we'll see what they'll say yeah, when they are, they are really being heard. Looking we are looking forward, forward to that. that. Yeah, I think <laughs> that we should add the, the parliament as well. And blouse. Parliament, Parliament and the as well. executive to it. Yaupon, thank you very much. Thank and by the so way, much. the Black Stars drew, and so I'm sure you are disappointed. But uh, uh, no, the well, Black Stars. I mean, we know, we, we, they usually treat us today. Okay. This, this but, but, but this is he, Benin. He, he raises the tempo. This is Benin. Oh, well, we. we, we <laughs> there are much stiffer tests to come than oh, Benin. They are neighbors. I mean, we should, we should okay. just treat them fairly. Well, okay. We, when we get the other top guys, some, you know, we, we, we do better when you get when the top guys. Okay. Well, that's a football fan yeah. speaking for you. We'll see what the reality says when we play our next game. Enjoy the rest of your evening.